Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pony 411. This is episode 173 for the week of March 26th. I am Alcatraz, and with me is Nemesis. Hey there. Got another episode for you today. We're going to go back and look at another old episode. We've done, did this the last episode. We're going to do it mm-hmm. again, but it's okay. We've also got in our standard news and got a couple comics to talk about and guess a little bit of fan content, sort of. Right. But anyway, let's get into the news. So if you would like to follow along, you can just go to our show notes, pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. Click the link for this episode. And let's get into this. In convention news, Project C PonyCon has opened vendor applications. So if you want to vendor stuff like that down there, get to it. Seabronies has announced their next voyage. It will be heading to Alaska. Also, the room block is open. So if you want to go get mm-hmm. on that as well. BabsCon has announced Tony Fleeks, Andy Price, as well as community animator Minty Root. Galacon has announced Forever Free Brony. BronyCon has announced Daniel Ingram. <laughs> and Everfree Northwest has announced community guests Dusty Cat and C. Allen Gann, who's the creator of Midnightmares. Yeah. Yay. So yeah, just a few announcements on that one. Into fandom news, the Ponyville Confidential book is now available. That's the sort of analysis of the history of ponies and from the 80s on to yep, now, now and now ish now ish yeah and stuff surrounding that like and i believe it goes into some fandom stuff as well yeah so yes if that's if you've been interested in getting that because i think we talked about it a long time ago when it first popped up a long time ago <laughs> yes <laughs> but it's now available weird al's next album medium rarities will have his super duper part Party Pony song on it. And this is like a an album of his lesser known stuff. Yep. It's a collection of those. I wonder if the rarities is a subtle reference to. Probably not, but No, it's <laughs> just a It's joke. kinda funny. Anyway. Skyrim Pony Follower Mod now has Celestia. So have Celestia follow you. Yay. <laughs> Praise the sun. Wait, wrong game. Wrong game. <laughs> Daydreaming Derpy has been updated. Adds a couple new little things. Hmm. And in a little bit bigger news, Overmare Studios has changed the name of their game to Ashes of Equestria instead of just Fallout Equestria for various reasons. There's a lot of stuff in there. Go read the blog post. Mm -hmm. You can get to it in the show notes that you should be reading. Yes. So yes, there's a lot more stuff on reasons on why they did that. No, they did not get hit with a C and D. No, they're just (laughs) trying to prevent that. (laughs) It's it's one of those they decided just to play it safe. Proactive. For a number of different reasons. Duo Cartoonist is stopping work on his fandom-related projects. I'm not entirely certain the reasons he wasn't exactly clear, but it's... Yeah, he's no longer doing fandom work. Something about cringy pony stuff or something. Uh, Yeah, there's a blog post on it. Go read it. It explains some more things in detail. A bit, sort of. A little bit. A little bit. I think it's one of those, I don't think he wants to get into it that much, but he also wants to give a reason to what's going on, sort of. So yeah, go read that. And apparently Brony Dance Party has had a few videos taken down due to copyright things. We're not entirely certain what, why, and stuff like that. They're still trying to figure things out themselves. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't look pretty. Supposedly, a company has gained the rights to like Nightmare Night and a bunch of other songs. Yeah, a bunch of the Brony songs. And they're taking them down because of that. It's known that some artists in the fandom have started putting the songs in these sort of copyright things to uh, protect deal. themselves. Yeah, and, and also sort of deal with YouTube's crappiness. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they're getting hit by an actual record label. So yeah, that doesn't that's not fun. It's not great. Also, apparently there's now also a uh, GoFundMe or something for yeah, it. Yeah, they're doing a phone roster to try and help out with what's going on. So if you're interested in helping and learning more, click the link in the show notes. Into merchandise news, Camelot Fabrics has fabric designs based off of art from the upcoming movie. It's only fabric. (laughs) Dumb fabric. (laughs) That's Camelot, not Canterlot Fabrics, like I originally misread it. Oops. (laughs) I I honestly misread it that first. You did not pony responsibly. I did not. I'm sorry. (laughs) Shame. I should follow our own rules. Trixie, Fluttershy, and Rarity are back at Build-A-Bear. So if you wanted to get those and missed it, you can get them now. Mm-hmm. 
So why would you want a Trixie? Unless you're Seth, I guess. Europe is getting the new line of McDonald's Happy Meal toys, the ones that had been in New Zealand. I guess they're mm-hmm. heading up to Europe. I wonder if they'll head this direction soon. Eventually. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Might actually have to go into a McDonald's again. Ah! It's been so long. The Equestria Girls Minis Mall Collection singles are now appearing on Amazon and other places. These are the ones we talked about uh, that Toy showed Fair. up at the Toy Fair. Yes. Not We're, actually available for sale yet. Yeah. They're showing up on Amazon, not for sale, but you can see the singles and stuff there. And they high resolution images. Yes. So you can get better pictures of what they look like. And official images of the upcoming Switch and Mix Fashions Equestria Girls mini sets have also appeared. These are the packages with like three of the same figure with different... No, just one figure and those other two are cardboard cutouts that have uh, outfits and stuff that can be swapped around. Yeah, it looks like three figures. Yeah, but yes. I made that mistake too. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, yeah, you get a figure with multiple different fashions and you can switch them out. So you get better pictures. And they're compatible with each other, so if you get both... Yeah. A couple of new MLP movie figures, also under the Guardians of Harmony line, have appeared. One's a pirate parrot that's named Boyle, apparently, and an airship that comes with Rainbow Dash. Yes, airships. I'm kind of looking forward to the airship. Oh, no. Even though I don't think it's Rainbow Dash's airship, even though it's got colors, so does the parrots. But hey, they include Rainbow, Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash is on so the box. <laughs> yes, Rainbow Dash is on the box and it's got her name on it, so hey, <laughs> makes me happy. Airships are awesome. And in comic news, the June solicitations from IDW are out, so we got some more synopses. First up is the movie prequel number one comic that we talked about a little while ago. Those mm-hmm. were coming out. Danger looms over Questria as a new villain debuts. That's the synopsis. That's what they gave us. So informative. Yes. <laughs> Next up is Friendship is Magic issue number 55. It's Wings over Yak Yakistan, part one of two. While on a diplomatic mission to Yak Yakistan, Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash are surprised to uncover an imminent attack on the kingdom by dragons. Will Dash be able to rouse the Wonderbolts and aid the Yaks in time to thwart the invasion? Dragons are attacking. And apparently looking at the covers, Ember's involved? Oh this boy. Could, this could get ugly. <laughs> this could get fun. And lastly, we have Legends of Magic number three. Journey back in time to discover the secret origin of Canterlot Castle. Will the legendary Mist Main be able to save the castle from the mysterious forces sabotaging the castle's construction? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. That's like that one rule. News, if a news headline asks a question, the answer is almost inevitably no. <laughs> yes. So those are coming up. Equestria Girls News. Legend of Everfree has been nominated for a Daytime Emmy Award. And that's the song from the movie, the opening the song. The opening song. <laughs> that has, shares a title with the movie. Yes. Legend it's of a Everfree. little confusing. Legend of Everfree from Legend of Everfree. Yes. It's a good song. Yes, it and is. Good songs, Brent. And into our last bit of news, Friendship is Magic itself. And spoiler alert. Lots of spoilers. So <laughs> yeah, pretty much all of these are spoilers. Here there be spoilers. So... Be warned. Skip ahead if you don't want to hear A teaser for the upcoming Season 7 premiere is up, and we also have their official name titles. They are Celestial Advice and All Bottled Up, the ones we knew before. Not a two-parter. Not a two-parter, apparently. Or at least not officially connected. Yeah, but they are the first two episodes. So the ones that were leaked. That is interesting, and I believe that completely cans all those fake episode title leaks. (laughs) Unless... Because they all had those two episodes somewhere, somewhere in the middle. Because no one expected a non-two-parter opening. Exactly, or at least a two-parter That's never that doesn't happened. share a name. I don't know. They might still be a two-parter just having two separate names, which has also never happened. I don't know. But either way, those are the first two. And the Discovery Family press page has some high-res screenshots available if you want to go look at them in pretty... Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's interesting is I, someone I saw someone on, on Dipperoo point to this out. It's, like, it's, like, it's like almost like twice even taller now growing more and more giraffe like i think it's it's like now she's like half a head taller what is up with this all the other alicorns are tall it's like actually it's there's a screenshot someone looked it's like she's almost as tall as luna now it's like oh wow is that is that just an animation thing or is that are they actually just did they actually go back and redo the puppet just to make her a little bit taller to kind of show things are changing yeah there's some some interesting things in those teasers for the the pre premiere that came out too yeah like the summoning circle one. I mean, 
that's also an interesting RIP thing. R.I.P. Starlight. Uh, in Thank the God. in the other the other one, John Delancey was saying that he didn't know. Oh, surprise! Was, it, it, I don't think I'm in season seven, and bam, he's in the first episode. Apparently, you might have thought that was season six. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I don't know. And then, yeah, the summoning circle. Interesting thing about that one. You see Celestia and Twilight in the background all glowy or something. All glowy and semi-transparent and not affected by what's going on and not... Ha- Starlight broke something. I just know it. Well, it, it's weird. They, they're like semi-transparent and glowy, but they're not affected by what's going on. And they're not trying to help, which makes me think they're not actually there. Either they're viewing something that happened in the past or remotely viewing it or yeah, something like that. Yeah, also some, what was it, some synopsis stuff. Wasn't, Yeah. Like the celestial advice, Twilight Sparkle agonizes over Starlight's glimmer's future and receives some much needed advice from her very own mentor, Princess Celestia. And that's like, hey, hey, it's Twilight and Celestia, but it's going to be about Starlight. It's about Starlight. Yeah. Which is confusing. It is confusing. And, and then annoying. we see Starlight and opening then, a portal to yeah, nowhere. Yeah, and then, uh, then Starlight. Somewhere. Let's see. Twilight's, or Starlight's Glimmer loses Twilight Sparkle's friendship map. Afraid or anger, my gal control Starlight Glimmer class of comics while the pony search for the lost map and also the main six are on them. Friendship retreat, so they're not going to be in that one, really, or briefly. If that, and then the, that begs the question: How do you lose something that's literally attached to the floor? Well, if you can open a portal in the ground that sucks everything in, you never know what you can do. How do you mess up that bad? Also, my my next question: She casts a calming spell on who? I think her afraid I her anger my gal control. It sounds seems like herself. I'm hoping herself. I'm hoping we don't see her just try to calm other people down forcefully. Like Hey, let's just double down on the really bad character development. Yeah, I'm hoping that doesn't go that way. But yes, that's not the other only other teaser. Discovery Family has just recently dropped another one. Which is related. Yes, related. Twilight's talking to Celestia, and oh hey, Starlight's right. again <laughs> outstripping my friendship lessons, which means uh oh. We have to send her away. <laughs> Someone here is Do very, not very happy about this. Get my hopes up, and then just you it's gonna better be about actually. Hope. No, you shut up. You shut your mouth. You do not dare. You dare ruin this for me. This is a chance that Starlight Glimmer might actually go away. Okay, I don't honestly think that you know it's gonna send them away, and then the show's gonna start focusing on Starlight primarily. But this could be how Twilight is going to be different than Celestia and not send them away. She needs to send her away. <laughs> it, I don't I care know. if this just winds up... <laughs> it's just, oh, Starlight winds up living in the Crystal Empire with Sunburst or whatever. Fine. That means she's pretty much not really in the show except for the occasional, hi, I'm here. Which is what we wanted in the first place. Yeah, that's what we want. And that We had a perfect opportunity in Season 6 to do that, but no. <laughs> keep her around. But now they're, they're clearly setting up and then... This idea they're, they're of setting Starlight. something up, but we can't really say what yet. We can say what we want it to be, but we well, don't know the, the, what. The, based on the clips, that they would point in the direction of they are going to put kind of more or less now put Starlight way in the background, like way, way, way in the background maybe. over there. I would say maybe. We, I'm we, trying to we, kill we, my hope. I, I'm just trying to be realistic here. Don't don't let your hopes. Cloud your judgment. <laughs> Shut up. I want to be happy. I, be I want happy. to be happy as well, but I also want to be realist. <laughs> Screw realism. And if only that worked. Oh, wait, in some places it does. <clears throat> anyway. We'll pass the bill, all right? <laughs> We're going to pass it. <laughs> oh. Seven years of planning and. Wow. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> apparently we have another potential confirmation of season eight, and this one's from John Delancey saying that they asked him to record for it. Yeah, as in right. he, he's, <laughs> he's talking in future tense too. Yep. So uh, unless this is some really last second something for the e- end of season seven, it's pretty much guaranteed for season eight. Yeah, it's that what two confirmations now on season eight? Sort yeah. of. They're like potential confirmations. Likely. <laughs> I mean, also, we see John Delancey's not exactly best at keeping secrets. Yeah, I've noticed that. <laughs> so, I guess season eight is really happening, you guys. I guess. <laughs> Until we see an official, official go no go on it. Yeah. Anyway, last bit of news we also have titles and synopses for episodes three and four of season seven. Told you this was all spoilery. 
So, episode three, it is titled A Flurry of Emotions, Ooh. and its synopsis is... After planning a jam-packed day, Twilight Sparkle also agrees to babysit her niece, Flurry Heart. But with Flurry Heart along for the ride, Twilight Sparkle struggles to maintain her title as the best aunt ever while keeping Flurry Heart out of trouble. Seems that Flurry Heart is still ruining everything. Yes. Flurry Heart ruins everything, part two. <laughs> Search for more money. <laughs> well. I'm not wrong. You're not wrong, <laughs> but that could be said about the entire show it is a big advertisement it always has but, been since the yeah, 80s okay so it's like okay twilight gets to be babysitter yes i want to see you know twilight's descent into madness once more but a different kind of madness this time <laughs> a madness that many of us actually understand yes and all the parents watching with their children will just go wow this hits close to any, home <laughs> anyone who's babysat a, a problematic child problematic any child <laughs> just small children in general <laughs> Yes. We also have episode four. It is called Rock Solid Friendship. When Pinkie Pie learns that Maud might move to Ponyville, she does everything she can to make sure her sister sees that it has more to offer than just rocks. Yes. Uh, you'd think rocks would be enough to get Maud. <laughs> yes, you'd think that would be Look enough. Look at this castle. It's a castle made out of a giant rock, basically. Crystals are a kind of rock, sort of. Yep. Yes, we're getting Maud again. Look at this Yay. other castle. <laughs> This old one. With made of rock. <laughs> made of more rock. <laughs> and look at these statues inside. They're made of even more rock. Rocks everywhere. <laughs> rock this on. Rock on. See Ma at a rock and roll concert. <laughs> oh. See her in the mosh pit just standing there. Or just you just see a very subtle just head a up subtle and down. head bob. <laughs> Maybe if that. So yes, that is the news. We done. Yes. No more spoilers. Except for comic spoilers. Oh, wait. Except for those. But we try and limit those to be safe. Yes. So, uh, yes, like I said, comics, go take those away. We got two of them. Okay, bye. <laughs> well. Wait. <laughs> anyway. I'll kind of take yeah. it away. So, first off, the issue that we were supposed to do last time but didn't because it took forever. Uh, the deviations issue of my Friendship is Magic. It's one shot. It says so right there. One shot. A little like more expensive too at five four ninety nine instead of four three ninety nine. Anyway, this one is Katie Cook and Art Agnes Garboska. Again, Katie Cook did the writing, and well, she also drew a little bit at the end too because she likes to do that. Uh, in this, it's basically well, it's a what if story, and it's what if Celestia decided to take Blue Blood on as a pupil instead of Twilight. And we get to the point where he has to go to Ponyville, and it's um, a thing. A thing that happens <laughs> definitely. And he encounters Nightmare Moon and whatnot. That's about yeah. That's without a, spoiling it, I guess. Yeah. yeah uh, it's a tough one, isn't it? This is um not particularly great, in my opinion. I think. The biggest thing is there's only so far you can drag out the joke of Blue Blood's a huge jerk to everyone. There's only so far you can drag that out before it kind of gets repetitive, and this goes too far. It just gets boring, because that's the whole point is Blue Blood's a huge jerk. Blue Blood's a huge jerk. Blue Blood's a huge jerk. And so it's kind of... Yeah. It's like some little bright spots here and there in it, but beyond that, it's kind of just... It's like if you had an entire episode devoted to Zephyr Bree. Okay. Okay, that's taking a little too far. <laughs> I it, think this was better than that would have been. Is it? <laughs> it is. I think someone else said the same, kind of the sort of thing, which is kind of like it's it's a male jerk version of rarity. Yeah. And it's not it, it, the problem is it's not that fun after a while. It very quickly becomes not, not so much. It stops becoming fun, being fun and becomes very very just annoying. You you're sitting there being as annoyed as the other characters are. Unless that's the point. And you enjoy <laughs> after it's just kind of like. Ugh. I will say it, the idea and the concept is pretty neat, and seeing how it would go, I like you and I mentioned off air wasted potential kind of yeah. thing it, it had potential but 
I did no. find myself while reading what this I, skipping a lot of dialogue yeah, what, from Blue I, Blood because it was I, just. Uh. I, what I just what I said was um, my initial impression way back when this first revealed this issue. My thing was this seems like a wasted opportunity, and that's what I still feel. I was one hundred percent accurate in that assessment, which is this feels like a wasted opportunity. It's just you had a you're basically given a uh, a free pass to do almost anything. And you decided to focus on blue blood. It feels like, why? I mean, again, there's a couple funny bits of after Nightmare Moon starts really showing up and whatnot. There's a bit where she, yeah, it's just, it's actually there's some funny stuff with yeah. Nightmare Moon there. But yeah. uh, beyond that, it's just kind of what. Oh, and there is a Watchmen reference which I appreciate. But beyond that, it's just kind of. It's just Blue Blood's a jerk, and it's it's hard to really en- en- enjoy that. Yeah, it it does feel like it just dragged it on I mean, and on and on. It doesn't on. help that at the end, Katie talks about how why she picked this, and she's just like, this is what she decided of all the things she could have done. This is what she decided on, and it kind of feels like... Even with yeah. the, just working within solely with the twi- replaced Twilight with X character, you can do far more interesting things. It's not... I can't really recommend it. I Personally, I, I can't. Uh, yeah, it, for me, it's just kind of a meh. Blue Blood just is just hard. It's just hard because so Blue Blood's so awful. You, it's hard to read it. Yeah, like you find that. yourself either skipping over or you just kind of you have to stop and kind of prep yourself for the next bit of Blue Blood stupidity. Yeah, well, yeah, because yeah, I was reading through it and it was just I found myself just skipping large chunks. It's like, yep, yep, yep. We've seen this. We've seen this. Let's keep going. Let's move on to something else. Because it's just over and over the same thing. It's like, yeah, I get it. He's a jerk. I use a different word, but... (laughs) I will say at least the art's nice. Yes. Otherwise, that. And the the Nightmare Moon part was great. Yeah. That was was funny. It's also weird because it kind of breaks Katie Cook's streak of good one-shots. Because she she had proven that she had done some good one-shot issues in the past. Like the Queen Chrysalis issue of Friendship is Magic and uh, some of the Friends Forever and uh, micro-series stuff. She did some good one shots. Then her problem always seemed to be the multi story, multi multi uh, issue arcs. But this is the first time that I feel like her one shot kind of faltered pretty hard. It happens. It just it seems like this was just a bad decision just to do blue blood. It's like there's so much you could have done. I think that could have been a lot more entertaining. I don't know, and it might just be individuals might see it differently depending on their how they feel about blue blood. Really, that's really what it comes down to is how do you feel about blue blood? Almost everyone hates him. Almost everyone does, but it's, you know, how and why, and everyone's going to be a little bit different. But either way, I felt it was kind of meh as well. Yeah, I, w- so. I would say just don't bother, especially since it's even more expensive than a normal issue anyway. Oh, yeah. Only one cool part was they showed the process of uh, creating the comic a Yes, bit. that was kind of neat. That was the one cool thing, I think, really. But beyond that, it's just whatever. But I you have know. another comic. Yeah, another <laughs> one. This one actually just came out, so this one's timely. Friendship's Magic number 52, part two of the... Uh, James Asmus arc there, in which, A, the main villain guy has just brought a whole bunch of books to life and attacked the main six in a library. Oh, no. Oh, no, indeed. And they have to fight these things, including, and of course, let's see, including a Lovecraftian horror, which uh, Pinky seems to uh, be probably fight just fine with. Yes. That makes me worried. But anyway, th- th- they have to fight these things, and they're finding out that things aren't as straightforward with this guy as they might seem initially. So that is a nice little thing. Uh, I actually really enjoyed this one. Again, it's, it's a part one got me. This one's continuing. So this is actually, I'm enjoying this arc so far. So I believe it is only goes, to, it's a three part arc, I believe, because 54. So, yeah, I'm, just, the, I'm yeah. just hoping we don't have a, just a sudden anticlimactic end. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do remember this does supposed to, to tie into season seven at some point. So he, and it seems like that is what they're leading into. Something's, and I'm guessing the finale, not. Not premiere like we thought it would be. Yeah. The finale. Yeah. So that would be a, a thing. But uh, I do also like some of the little jokes regarding the books and stuff, including, let's see, what H. Pony Love Cart. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, fa- the fact they got a Lovecraft reference in there makes Frank me... Frank and the pl- Stag. Yeah, and this... Yeah. And that one. I'm actually... actually Frank Stag's monster. <laughs> yeah. That little bit was pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, there's a lot of just fun stuff in this one, and... and and I think Tony Fleeks has just generally been improving. Yes, that's one thing. You look at some of his original stuff, and you can definitely see an improvement. 
Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Um, the maniac makes a cameo too. Yep. So yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to the finale. I'm hoping it holds up to the, these last two issues because this has been, I think, first time in a while. Like the main series has been really good. Yeah. It's because we've gotten some pretty dud arcs lately. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to how things go in the final issue because we've already got a set, pretty nice setup and everything. Yeah, it was like the first the first issue of this arc was like the setup. Yep. This one's the build up, and now we can get the the climax. The climax. So it, I would definitely recommend Dick picking this one up, especially if you already read the first part. Or if you pick this one up, you better pick up. up yeah, <laughs> yeah. Issue, I mean, issue, if you one two, you'll be lost. <laughs> yes. So yeah, it looks good. Looking forward to the next so one. So far, two out of three so filter. far have been great. So hopefully, part hopefully three will doesn't ruin it, out. it. Hopefully, don't ruin it. Don't hurt me. So yes, those are the comics. On to our main point. We went back and watched an old episode again. Mm -hmm. We picked "Look Before You Sleep." I mean, the Rare Jack episode. The Rare Jack episode. <laughs> so, yeah, do we even need to do a synopsis? There's a storm. Apple and Rare Jack. Rare Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you can see what's on my mind. <laughs> Apple Jack and Rarity are arguing about it. Twilight lets them in. They decide to have a sleepover. They keep arguing. They keep arguing. Almost ruin everything. Almost ruin it. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to do this for me, are you? <laughs> then they fix their problems and everything's yes. fine. <laughs> and they have arguments, happens. then everything's fine. Yes. And then they kiss. No, wait. <laughs> wait that no. didn't actually happen. <laughs> It had to be in the script somewhere. I probably just removed it, then right? Yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this was. It was an which episode, episode was this? This, this was, was an eight. early one. So before the first half, still in the first half of yep, season one, eight. right up there. So I, I think this was probably in the second batch of the ones that I ever watched. I don't think this I made is... it into the first batch when I first started watching. Yeah, this is a. Uh, this is the first Applejack and Rarity significant interaction. Yes. It was. Um, and boy, it was an interaction. It, it gave us really, I think, our first peek into more of the personality, one of rarity, and the flaws of both of them. Really. Mm -hmm. it, it started exposing those. And it was just really well done and hilarious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, including the beginning, which is kind of just, I don't want to get muddy. I don't want to get, oh no, I'm not going to get under the, the, the bench yeah. table. And of course, they're slowly backing away while never breaking eye contact before snapping <laughs> together in a, in a hug because they were scared of the lightning. Yep. Yeah, looking back on this, there is a lot of things comparing it with some of the recent episodes. You, you look back on these early ones, you can definitely see things were a lot simpler, I guess, back then. Oh, yeah. A lot simpler, and not just you know animation or stuff like that, but some of the storylines. But they still worked. It, they didn't need to be complicated. And it was, I don't know, it was just kind of refreshing to look at back at these. Yeah. Oh, just kind of. It, this was something that kind of threw me because it's like listening to Rarity's voice. Like Tabitha did very different back then. Yeah, she's. I guess it's one of those just growing into your voice. Yeah. Tabitha's really grown yeah. into it since then more and you can yeah. tell back then there was as there's there's a less of a it's hard to explain what it is but um the, her voice sounds way different than it does in later episodes even within the first season i wouldn't say way different but enough to be noticeable you, you can still see you know you hear them back to back and you still say yeah it's the same person same character so they're not super different but yeah you can definitely hear a difference of course you're going to hear that rarity still kind of a dork just like all of them they're, they're all, all dorks, dorks. Even Applejack. They're all dorks. But yeah. It, and again, like most of the season one stuff, it was a source of so many things we still hold on to here in the fandom. Ooh. <laughs> yep, the spooky. And of course, Rarity. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you tried. You tried. <laughs> uh, that's another. Th that's one of those things that's kind of endearing about her. It's just kind of the earnest but very bad attempt at doing something. Yep. It was our first introduction to Legend of the Headless Horse, too. Yep. Legend which did head. come back later. The Headless Horse. Yep. <laughs> it came back in another really good episode. Uh -huh. yep. But we're not talking about that one, unfortunately. No, fortunately. Uh, what else can we say about this one? It was just... 
Yeah, really, it's, it's nice because it really establishes that dynamic between Applejack and Rarity where they're constantly picking at each other. Yeah, they're, they're... Even later, after they've actually befriended each other for real, they're still pick at each other a yeah. lot. Yeah, we, we keep coming back to this dyna- the Applejack-Rarity dynamic that they have. They're so different, but yep. it, we see here where they're initially is just clashing so hard, and we throughout the later episodes and seasons, we see them... We see them grow, and, and those those differences start to kind of work together, I guess. And yet they, they still start to balance to... With, against each other, but they still bicker. and They still manage to pick poke at each other. Yeah. it's it, you know, This was the start of it. And, I and thought we agreed it... never to speak of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I could almost, I it almost also, see. This, is, this, along, this, along with some of the other episodes around it, we this establishes that, yeah, these five characters actually, while they have do have friendships there, they weren't really, a lot of them weren't actually close at all before Twilight Show. Yeah. This we see, this is the one we see where Rarity and Applejack don't never really, if they interact with each other, it's probably it always was, hostile. Was, yeah, very minimal. I think the only ones that... I mean, even in that other episode, we saw that Pinky and uh, Rainbow Dash didn't really talk to each other. Yeah, they didn't really interact. With it. Now, we, we find out that Rainbow and Fluttershy have always known each other and for a long time. And then we also find out Rarity and Fluttershy have kind of established a uh, friendship of their own. Yeah. And then Applejack and Dash got their competent, competitive going thing going. And Pinky's yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> Pinky's just there. No, I think Pinky's just known to everyone. Yeah. She makes there. sure of that. Yep. But yeah, either way, it, yeah, we, we start seeing that they weren't as close as they are now at this point. We see them start coming together. Mm. And this is part of that early establishment. Yep. But yeah, it, it, this is... When you see the later episodes between Rarity and Applejack and they, they bicker all and stuff like to that. This. I, I can totally see them when they do that, them remembering this episode. Them remembering what happened here when they the start sleepover. picking at each other. They remember sleepover. the sleepover yep. in their heads when they do oh, that. Oh, you were wanted to know about sleepovers, but were afraid to ask. <laughs> <laughs> of course, she would have that parties. book. Yep. And of course, I didn't know itself as a reference. Also, of interesting, they were eating marshmallows. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Rarity. Uh, taste me, I'm delicious. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's where we're gonna stop before it goes other places. But yes, it was a very straightforward episode, mm-hmm. but it it worked so and well. It's it's weird because also like Twilight in this one is kind of this weird mix of naive, but also it, she does notice. She's not as oblivious as people like to play up, but she is naive. Yeah, it, it's kind of interesting. It, she plays it up as being naive and it looks like she has a, well, just being completely oblivious. But then later it's like, no, she did notice and she was trying to stop. But then in other parts, she was just completely gone well that wasn't oblivious at the the end that was just her just i think that was just her brain just didn't know how to handle this and just kind of this is not in the instructions (laughs) so now what (laughs) versus earlier it's like she's it looks like she's just oblivious and turns out no she knew exactly what was going on she's trying to fix it trying to fix it with the book he's hoping the book will make it you know by, by following the book which says how to have fun she can get them to have fun and they're not. They're picking at each other. So it's in her own way. She was trying to help. Yeah, but it is an it interesting, interesting mix going on in that episode for her. Yeah, <laughs> and then the tree came down and it just broke her. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> she was Strange just goes bye. <laughs> I'll be over here for a while until it's all sorted out. Yeah, until everything's fixed and like, oh, where'd these come from? <laughs> yeah, pretty. It's like, wow, you didn't even notice them haul a tree out the window. This is a pretty lady. <laughs> but, uh, there was the, what was the, no, some of the faces in here were also pretty nice. And they're uh, been used, like, uh, Applejack's clutching her head with her eyes all. Applejack hanging from the, with the rope in her mouth. <laughs> or Rarity's, the face she made right after Applejack ripped the blanket out of her. Mouth is just the lower jaw jutting out, and people <laughs> screen caps that. Just <laughs> or Applejack, I'm asleep. <laughs> and then there's that one video of her sliding into the, sliding into bed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so many things we had so little to work with, yet we did so much with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the also the, just the just the uh, wide eye surprise. Just some of the like. <laughs> 
Applejack um, <laughs> about Falcon. to kick the lock out and the window. And then Rarity just glares at her, and just Applejack just <laughs> just stops and white, just, just deer in the headlight look. <laughs> oh right, <laughs> and of course it is on. Yep, pillow fight. Oh, the pillow fight. <laughs> yep. Take no prisoners. Yep, that was a good one. That was that was. It's also interesting. Just kind of the the, the truth and dare game just kind of turned into an argument. Immediately, and then yep. try like try to intervene. It kind of worked, and then it didn't. And then it didn't. <laughs> Dare you go outside? Oh wow, that's that's cruel. That's actually kind of cruel. Yep, it's not just about the hair. It's about oh god, it's cold and miserable that, that and is, wet. And... Uh, that is miserable. And that's then, something we're sort of. And used again, to there is a special misery <laughs> in having to wear an outfit you hate. Uh, Every kid kid knows that. Yep. Yep. There's a special misery in that. Yep. Not just uncomfortable, it's embarrassing. <laughs> also, there's some, what was it, was Rarity just kind of poofing a tree into little tiny figurine things. Yeah. Ah, yes, Nebulous, how does magic work? How does magic work? <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, that seems rather advanced. Also, it's interesting, though, a lot, Rarity didn't do a lot of things just she didn't even do magic for. She used her mouth like Applejack does, which is interesting in of itself. Yes. Yeah, like, we're going to pick up the books with our mouth. Why don't you just use the magic that you've already been shown to use? I'm also wearing a book hat. <laughs> book hat. That's, yep. Yeah. It's all the latest rage. That's, yeah, that's an interesting thing. It's just, I think it's just rarity for, unlike Twilight, Twilight, for Twilight, magic is second nature. Rarity is kind of, oh yeah, I have that, don't I? Yeah. I think, I think for rarity, it's just because it's outside of her, what her normal... Um, Except rarity. she uses it all the time when doing like sewing work. We see. Well, that's the thing. It's at anything outside of her area of expertise. She doesn't really think about magic. She, for her, that's where it comes in. Is like, oh, I have magic. This is my thing, sewing and whatnot. So that's when she or making things pretty. That's when she uses magic. But when it comes to just ordinary stuff, she kind of doesn't think about it. And she just kind of does it how other ponies do it, which is pick it up with your mouth and stick it in your mouth and you. And that's speaking. <laughs> which how does Applejack hold those marshmallow sticks? I don't know. That that's always been a thing since Apple day Wolverine. one. Wolverine Applejack. That's been it. how do ponies hold things in their hooves? No one knows. It's like that one animation with the chopsticks. <laughs> yep. Bubbles in the chopsticks. Uh uh. <laughs> don't think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it. And oh and then the facials that was them good them Oh yes. Good Yes, the yeah, that is that thing of like, why? Do you, if you hate mud so much, why do you put it on your? Why do you pay like a thousand dollars to put some on your face? Or like you the just... mud bath, because we see she actually does the mud bath thing too at the spa. Yeah, so it's like, like if you hate, but white, mm. it's a different kind of mud, <gasps> but still mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I remember how this when I first watched this, how this made me feel about Rarity, because Rarity's never been. I know a favorite episode, a favorite character of mine. This probably didn't help, but it didn't really make things worse either. Rarity's been mi always been mid tier for me. Yeah, she's been lower tier on the when just considering the main six, she's always been a little bit lower tier for me. But yeah, I think it was okay just because the dynamic between them worked better. I don't think it affected things that much. Also, immature arguments does not does too. Does not, does two, <laughs> does not plus infinity. <laughs> does not plus infinity. It's like, geez, are you five? Yes, probably. <laughs> yeah. It was a good episode, fun. and I it still was... think it holds up. Yeah, of course it does. I mean, it's the, it's the beginning of the Rare Jack thing. Oh, yes. Which is, like, one of the most popular ships in the One fandom. of the most popular. It's almost to the point where people are just like, yeah, it's canon. <laughs> it might as well be. It's almost as canon as Lyrabon. <laughs> almost. Almost. Good things are a rarity. Yeah, it's like, jeez. <laughs> Apple a rarity having a picture of Applejack on her nightstand. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's just it just kind of establishes a really interesting dynamic. Not only does it just the two polar opposites, and one's super neat and tidy, and the other one's not. Not. No, the other one's kind of, yeah, big picture, little picture, that big picture details. Yeah, doing hard work and not caring about getting dirty and. You know, caring about getting dirty and... It's like Green Acres. <laughs> Drop a reference to that old show. Where a city girl gets married to a country guy. And moves out to the farm and has to adjust. Oh, yes. Well, the opposite of that one. Like the... 
what is it Beverly Hillbillies or something like that? Yeah. It was like the opposite side. In a sense. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I got nothing else. Yeah, it, that was a like you said, it was a, a pretty straightforward episode. It's pretty straightforward, but it's a lot it's fun and it also establishes a lot of things that will I can't remember more or less it says it, it it's the ripple the, effect on the rest of the sh- series. Yeah, it sets the tone for those two characters, really. Mm-hmm. So, it's in, it's very important. From can't, can't stand each other to they can pretty much stand each other. <laughs> pretty much stand each Except other. Except they will occasionally. <laughs> yeah. Snipe. Have a lover's quarrel. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all I've got to talk about it. Not yep. a huge amount to say. Most everyone knows about it already. Mm-hmm. Moving on to fan content. I don't have music this week. <laughs> I would have, but stuff. So do we have any fan fix? No new ones. No new ones, but we do have an update. Yes, update, because the Enchanted Library updated with a new chapter and a new interlude. And also the author changed his name. Oh. To Jupiter XVIII, so uh, it's 18. Jupiter 18. Jupiter 18. Formerly monochromatic. And uh, this just chapter is very depressing. Yep, it builds on what happened in the chapter before. In which Rarity is stubbornly refusing to uh, accept the idea that she can't see Twilight anymore. Yep. And I also found out apparently the author at one point spoiled something because someone asked and they said, I didn't build them up to get them together, I build them up to tear them apart. Oh no, the interlude worries me. Yes, I'm <laughs> concerned. You're giving me a concern. This is not marked sad, you're not allowed to do this. <laughs> And then the sad tag appears. Oh, no. Uh. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Yeah. So that's that's it for fan fiction. Yep. But we're going to do something a little bit different. Yeah, we're changing things up. Yep, a little bit. Animation. Probably overdue, probably. Yeah. We've been putting the animation in the news. And yeah, we like, have been putting animation stuff in the news. And, and it's it, kind of it like, why better. are we doing this? It's not really news as much. But yeah, some animation stuff that's popped up. Two Best Sisters put out a remake of the Assassin's yeah. Creed Brotherhood. Two Snacks. Two, two Best S- Sisters replay. Yeah, Two Snacks put that on because that was the first one they did. And it was anniversary. Yep. So, so see, that episode is better. Way, way better. Way animation. better animation. So that's fun. Go check that out. One. Also, Shades of Everfree has made a PMV from Perry Grip's Breakfast Burrito. Yum, yum. Yep. It's all about Sonata. And fill up your tummy with hugs. Yep, it's great. It's, it's a fun one. Uh, sh- yeah, it's um, a very nice little animation style there, and uh, little references here and there, including like Sweetie Bot. Sweetie Bot shows up a lot. Sweetie I Bot. didn't mean to lot to rhyme. Uh, and there's also <laughs> just some different outfits for the main six. Yes. Oh, so not it's just her normal outfit from Equestria Girls. Whatever. I don't know. Yeah, it's a fun little song. It's Perry Grip. So it's Perry you know, Grip. If you so. don't know who that is, you know that's a you know space then shame unicorn. on you. Space unicorn, you know from Star Versus, or, <laughs> or, or referenced in Star Versus. <laughs> yes, or the Nom 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 song. That was a classic. But yeah, it's great. Go go check it out. So yeah, that's it. We are at the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. Hope you liked what you heard. We hope you listen to more. You can find all of our episodes, past, future, present, at pony411.libsyn.com. You can also find us our, find our episodes on iTunes. Search for Pony411. Subscribe to us there. You can also find us on Stitcher, Stitcher.com, or on the mobile apps. You can also find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pony411. Go watch the episodes there. Go like them, subscribe to us, and comment on the videos. You can also listen to us on Ponyville FM. We air there every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're also on Ponyville Live. If you get more stuff from them, you can find us there as well. We're mm-hmm. also on Google Play. Just search for us, Pony411. You'll find us. If you would like to get a hold of us, you can contact us via email at pony411podcast at gmail.com. Send us comments, criticisms, suggestions. If you want us to talk about something... Send it to us there, and we'll take a look at it. If you just want to say hi or whatnot, tell us we're wrong, tell us we're right, whatever. Email us. You can also contact us on Facebook, facebook.com slash pony411. Go like our page there. We update it with news updates and stuff like that. We're also on Twitter, at pony411. That's probably the best way to get a hold of us for quick, short communications. Go follow us, see us tweet. 
You can also follow us on our personal accounts. I am at Alcatraz with an underscore at the end and a 7 instead of T, and he is at Nemesis Prime 1. Power Rangers is great. Horizon Zero Dawn is amazing. Yeah. Power Rangers is fun. Yes, I haven't seen that. I've never been huge into Power Rangers. But yes, if you're into open world RPGs, go play Horizon. If you, ever, if you grew up in the 90s and watched Power Rangers, watch Power Rangers. <laughs> watch the new movie. Maybe eventually I'll see it. Yeah. Um, also, yeah, our website has changed. You probably saw it on Twitter. Uh, we kind of had it. We're forced into it. <laughs> but it's, I guess it's for the better. It's it looks for good. the better in the end. There are still a couple little bugs here and there. You'll be squashing those. Yeah, we'll try to figure those out as time goes on. So let us know what you think. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and use right now, one of them particularly, use the archive link and not try to just use the infinite scrolling. It won't work. <laughs> infinite scrolling is not so... If, well, it is. It just doesn't work right. Yeah. It kind of has a tendency to repeat episodes three or four times before it's moving on. But yes, new site stuff. So, yes, again, hope you liked what you heard. Hope you tune into our other episodes. Not entirely certain what Nemesis here is going to pick for our next one. Yep. But, yes, hope you tune into that. But... Until then, remember, please, pony responsibly. See ya. Goodbye.